My studio is so bright and cheerful when I opened up my blinds. Hey everybody and welcome back to Art a la carte. Today I'm going to be trying something that I love watching other YouTubers do. I think the first YouTuber I saw do this was Super Ray Dizzle and she has a whole bunch of old things that she's tried out and I love watching them. And recently I saw Nerdy Crafter do a super old craft kit and I love doing this. Well, I wasn't planning on doing one like this, but I was at my local thrift shop when I found this. There's a gnat in my face. Yes, this is the Pinch Connection as seen on TV. Fabulous yarn sculptor. Regularly $3, but it was a yellow tag, which means half off, so a buck fifty. And I thought, why not? Supposedly, you can make these cute little felty figurines patches. I don't know what I will do with them. I'm, but I'm thinking they might make fun patches. Let's just see. Inside, we should find the patented punch stitchers in three different sizes. A punch connection Sherlock professional loop hoop craft threads in four jumbo spools, eight reusable iron-on stencils, a bear, a kitten, a butterfly, and more, lifelike animal eyes, yarn brush, and easy to follow instructions. Just punch out and fill in the blanks. So obviously this has been opened, possibly used, because it's a secondhand store. Uh, so this must be the Sherlock hoop. It's some assembly required. I hope there's the other part, which is right here. Yay. But I, I, I'm sure you could just use the, um, an embroidery hoop. Next we have four jumbo yarns, which you can tell these, this one hasn't been used. This one slightly, this one more, and then the black definitely has been used. This, I don't know <laughs> what this is, but it's a little thin wire. Can you guys even see it? There you go. There's also this, Spooly thing. I think this must be the brusher, the yarn brusher, because it's got like a really pretty much this is a Velcro. So I don't know if this is the brusher or not. We have these two animal eyes with back pieces. We have a lot of dirt too. We have the patented, what were these called? Patented what? Punch stitchers. Three of them in three designs. So there they are. The Punch Connection presents the Punch Art Embroidery. I love this. It's so. I want a date for this. This was copyrighted 1990. So, how many of you guys are younger than this package? Okay, so if I wanted to follow a design, there's these design things. I guess I could iron them on with eight designs. We have a teddy bear. Not gonna lie, he's a little on the creepy side. We have a very detailed cat. Another teddy bear. A carousel horse. Another cat and two other panda-ish bears. One sitting on a sunflower seed, maybe? Two different butterflies. And instructions. Run the threader down the loopy. It comes out the bottom here. Then we will take our yarn. We'll practice with the, is that a bug leg? I think that's a bug leg. Thread. We're gonna put the th thread through the fur. Now we have to thread it through here like so and gently remove the threader. Next, moving on to the next part of the instructions. Hello friends. After watching a few YouTube videos to figure out what this is, I found that this is very close to rug making, a rug punching I guess. So we're gonna try it out because these instructions are not clear. I've also decided not to do the ambitious huge loom. I'm going to first try it 
on a small piece of fabric right here. And let's draw a little design. Something, something, something easy. I'm an artist, so I have things to draw with. Let's, let's make a little kitty face. I don't know that I would use these cat eyes. That'd be really big. Big old cat eyes. Okay. The time testing moment to see if this really, really works. I'm gonna start here and a short little, oop, not that short. There we go. Seems to be working. So it has little loopies on the back side. <laughs> oh goodness. And there we go. This is supposed to be beautiful. The side looks not bad, but this is supposed to be the back side. This is supposed to be the pretty side, supposedly. So if you don't like it, you can always take your yarn and, and pull it up like that. And you're supposed to be able to scrub it. And, and get it all nice. So I'm gonna try it again and see if I can get it to look a little bit better. So let's try this again, shall we? We're just gonna cut our losses and move on. And I think this, I think you just scrub this or something. Oh, that was, no. no. Mistake. I regret my life choices. Thing says nothing about this spooly thing. I don't know. And I don't know what keeps this from not coming apart. But as I say, never give up. Try it again. Ishly <laughs> finished one eye and the mouth. This is the beautiful side, which I don't know. I'm thinking this is prettier, but when this all gets finished, maybe this will be beautiful. I don't know. Let's move on to the other eye. So here is the cat's ear. <laughs> Let's do the other one. All right. So there is what we have. So far. So far. Okay. Alright, she's finished for this part, and this is what it looks like, which, okay, at first glance, hot mess, right, right. But once you start looking at it, and once we start cleaning this up, I think it won't be that bad. Now, supposedly, when I take this off of the hoop, the, the stretch fabric should seal it in, but I don't think this is... I don't know, because this doesn't seem very taunt. 
um, in here. As you keep on punching, it gets a little bit looser. Maybe that's why they have the, the big hoop. Maybe it's just, you know, industrial strength. So I might have messed that up. But I have, I have, a, I have a plan. I have a thought on this first. Take this off of there. There we go. So there is our cute little thing. I'm going to cut this out here with not fabric scissors. These are definitely my crafty scissors. And if I think if I got even, it looks more like one of those little Bichon Frise puppies that are just really, really cute. Um, but I could trim this around the eyes. I think if I had better scissors, it would work a little bit better like if I had the embroidery scissors or something. I'm just going to kind of try not to destroy all the hours of work. There we go. And then I think, see this is such a cute, it's almost like a patch. But this is very cute and fluffy and all that. But I think what I might do is just take a little bit of glue. Oh, I'm going to find my glue. You clean your studio and then you don't know where anything is. I'm going to attempt this. I'm going to take a little bit of this tacky glue and just kind of glue this. And I think that will hold my stuff in just a little bit better. Which also makes me think, if I were to cut this fabric really short, because this does fray, but if I were to cut the fabric short and apply a little bit of this glue, this might actually be a working patch. Like, you could actually sew this onto something. Why you'd want to sew it onto something, I don't know. But if you wanted to, I think you could. So I think this should secure this. Now, I am not doing this because I read this in instructions or even anybody on YouTube of the tutorials talked about this. This is just my own thoughts, trials and errors, testing out something and going with it. But I just, my gut instinct says a little bit of this, not a lot, get too much then it's going to soak into here. But yeah. I think that'll hold my design in there. So I'm gonna let this dry, clean it up a little bit more, and then show you the final product. After I finished recording this video, I had a couple of ideas. And one is that I cut the fabric all the way around it and then used a hot glue gun to fold over the excess fabric because you don't want to cut super close because it, it'll fray, but the hot glue keeps it from fraying. So, or I could make it into like a patch, put a backing on it sew it onto something. That'd be cute. And then I had too much fun. I did the same thing with the strawberry. I, I glued that and put that around there. So this definitely looks like a little, like a little rug for like a dollhouse or something. Or you can make it patch. I think the more I practice with it, the better I would get. Also, um, I tried with this one, I tried different amounts of thickness like so this one I you can tell I put a lot closer together and this one I went ahead and made it a little bit looser to see so you can see the difference and I really like the one that I had a lot thicker the thin one is pretty good there's a couple spots that you can see through and if you're gonna do something um, I would almost use a fabric color that kind of is close to this either a red fabric or a yellow fabric um, the white just kind of pops through especially in the green aspects of it, but it turned out pretty cute. And then I was totally done. I was editing the video and I got inspired. So I made a little sit spray. <laughs> for fine detailing, this is not great for fine detailing and there's a little fuzzy in him. So I couldn't get the little spots in his eyes, but I figured if I just took a permit marker, maybe, and not ruin it, but I just kind of, just kind of dye the fur in, or yarn in there black. It's now a mixed media piece, but it looks so much better with little eyeballs right there. 
I was so I'm happy that I took a chance, spent a dollar fifty at my local thrift store, and gave um, gave it a try. I, I will tell you that uh, there were some definite. I definitely YouTubed a lot of uh, instructional videos. I couldn't find anything about this kit in particular, but it didn't take me very long to find find what it was similar. What did I learn today? I learned shopping at a secondhand store, you can find some treasures. I also learned that they can come with really bad instructions. And I already knew this, but it was a good reminder to never give up, even if you try and it doesn't work out. Keep working at it. Try to find more information about it. Um, and you, you never know, it might turn out to be something super cute. Once again, thank you so much for joining me in this crafty adventure. And as always, God bless you guys. Keep being creative, trying new things, and never give up. And I'll see you again in another art or crafty video. Bye-bye.